There is a character in Honkai Star Rail that is so goddamn busted that like she sits in heaven just looking down on the rest of us. It's a character that asks the question, should the enemies really have turns? And she, and the answer is no, they shouldn't. And then she goes on to ask, should my allies have turns? Well, maybe, sometimes, or maybe sometimes, if they do have a turn, it can be to help me out. Hello everybody, today we're gonna talk about Sele, the absolute most busted unit of this game. Come along. Alright, so what makes Sele so goddamn powerful and like so upright freaking broken is the fact that she gets another turn if she kills somebody with an attack. So for example, let's use Alt on this one. The reason we're using Alt right away is so we're not sitting here capped on energy. I have Sela at E6, which means I have her at E4. E4 makes it so we get back 15 energy whenever we kill something. Like, you see, you see what, what happens now. That's the third one we kill. Sorry, the second one. This is the third one. Now we have our ult back again. We can ult right away. Bada ping, bada boom. <coughs> and since we want to make sure that we kill this also when we attack them, we're gonna use Pela. We're gonna like completely obliterate their defenses. Let's have a look. Yeah. Everybody except the one to the left is basically down to a half defense. And that won't cut it against us. That's how we die. Oh, we're out of skill points. Well, it doesn't matter. But like, that's one of the things to keep in mind. Sele is very skill point hungry. It's like having characters that can, is some some way give her skill points is gonna be beneficial <clears throat> because you're gonna struggle a little bit with uh, the skill point management but a combat like that it was a double combat so it was a double pack of enemies no not a single person had a turn except Sele and like I said like this game is if you have Sele it's not turn based it's Sele based and like she is so freaking strong like she is so good let's take a closer look at like the ins and out and how she works and all of that. Take it on. Close look at like the ins and outs of her. And let's jump into her idols, shall we? So before we check on this, I just gotta say Sierra works perfectly fine without any of the idols. No one is required, but every single one of the idols are good. Every single one is good. Uh, but yeah, don't feel like you can't use her only because you have her at like E1. She's perfectly fine. As you see, I'm a disgusting whale, so I have her at C6 or E6. God damn it, the Genshin terms are really sticking, aren't they? <clears throat> so the first one. When dealing damage to an enemy whose HP percentage is at 80% or lower, crit rate increases by 50%. Like, this is nice. This is nice. So, the way Sele works, what's so amazing about Sele? is if she gets a killing blow <clears throat> she gets resurgence and gets to act again all of this can only happen once so she can't get the resurgence on the resurgence although what she can do is she can use her no <clears throat> use her turn get the kill with her skill get resurgence uh, maybe get a kill who knows and then immediately after you use your ultimate because your ultimate is like on its own separate turn. If you manage to get a kill with the ultimate, bada bing bada boom, you get resurgence again. So we want to be able to kill people when we smack them. So having something that gives you a 15% increased crit rate on anything below 80% HP is really good. It's really good. Second one, Dancing Butterfly. The speed boost effect of sales skill will stack up to two times. This is also really, really good. This is really good. <clears throat> Especially if you have a light cone. Like, without this, it only stacks once. But if you have this, it stacks twice. And this alone alleviates, like, any need to build speed on her artifacts. Which is 
quite frankly amazing. Third one, skill plus two and talent plus two. Okay, also good. You use your skill at the entire lot. Four. This is perhaps the best one, I might say. Or the one I like I really feel when I'm playing her. Sela rearranges 50 energy when she defeats an enemy. So her skill already on its own rearranges 30 energy for you. Uh, then you put in 15 extra when you defeat an enemy and take into consideration the fact that you defeat a lot of enemies uh, with her. So like the way I like to open up, you, you use your ult, you probably kill something with it, then you use your skill, you kill something, and then you use your skill again with the resurgence. And <clears throat> when you have Eidolon 4, that means that you now have another ult. Like three kills will make it so you have your ult back. And yeah, that it just never stops. It never stops being Sailor's turn, which is quite insane. <clears throat> and the fifth one increases ultimate and basic attack. Also good, obviously. Now the sixth one is is interesting. It's interesting. After Sailor uses her ultimate, inflicts the target enemy with butterfly flurry for one turn. Enemy suffering from butterfly furry, fl furry, flurry will take additional quantum damage equal to 15% of Sela's ultimate damage every time they are attacked. If the target enemy is defeated by the butterfly flurry damage triggered by other allies attacks, Sela's talent may not be triggered. So, <coughs> what this does is after you ult an enemy, and say, you, just for simplicity, say that that ult does 10,000 damage, although that is very low. Uh, let's just say 10,000 damage. That enemy will now have a butterfly flurry debuff. So when when any of your allies strikes the enemy, uh, an extra 1,500 damage because 50% of 10,000 uh, like will be dealt because they have this debuff. One thing to, to keep in mind is that as soon as the enemy is, enemy is done with his turn. Uh, he loses this. So like it's only active until the enemy has acted. So if Sela is about to play uh, Or like if it's Sela's turn and the next turn it's uh, <coughs> Sorry ne next turn is the boss Then it might be Very worth waiting to use that this ultimate until the boss has acted Otherwise it will only be active for like Sela's one attack so let the boss have his turn, then you do then you do this, and then your entire team can have a go with this debuff up on enemy. This one is insanely good. Like it in my opinion it covers like Sales only weakness. Like she's insane against like mid to weak enemies. Uh, without this, she's good at like cleaning up. But like lacks a little bit when it comes to really beefy shonky dudes. But not if she has E6. This one is amazing, amazing. All right, let's uh, move over to traces. Oh, sorry, we, we can do relics. Let's do relic first. So there's really two sets available for your CLA, and I highly recommend you going for the brilliant stars one. Two piece increases quantum damage by 10%, and four piece when the wearer deals damage to the target uh, enemy ignores 10% death. If the target enemy has quantum weakness, the were additionally ignores 10% death. This is also insane. So quantum weakness is when the enemy is weak to quantum, like obviously. You, you will see it above their HP bar. If they have the quantum symbol, then the four piece will activate. And a lot of people, a lot of mobs and enemies are weak to quantum. So this you will get a lot of value out of this. The other set, uh, that you can consider is Musketeer of the Wild Weed. Two piece, attack increases by 12%. Four piece, the worst speed increases by 6%. And basic attack damage increases by 10%. It is not as good as Brilliant Stars. But it works. And you're gonna be finding a lot of Wild Weed uh, in the early stages of the game. So. Don't worry too much about the uh, Brilliant Stars up until you reach level 40. Then you can start farming for this. Run with Wild Wheat uh, before that. 
You can also do a mix increase like you have two pieces of brilliant stars and then two pieces of wild wheat. That also works. Uh, but I would I would highly recommend and you will get the m most damage out of going four piece brilliant stars. Now as for your planet uh, planet fairs and yeah like this set you ha you have a, a a bit more options so space ceiling station increase the wearer's attack by 12 percent when the wearer's speed reaches 120 or higher the wearer's attack increase by an extra 12 percent really freaking good you will reach this very easily with sailor especially if you have idol on two so this is one you can you carry on uh, no, 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 no. <coughs> this one as well celestial differentiator increases the wearer's crit damage by 60 percent <coughs> when the wearer's current crit damage reaches 120 percent or higher after entering battle the wearer's crit rate increases by 60 percent until the end of their first attack so for example this this can be quite good if you have your alt ultimate up and ready to go you have a, like a guaranteed crit on that ultimate which is kind of insane uh, you can also go kingdom of bantry increase the worst break effect by six percent when the worst speed reaches 145 or higher the worst break effect increases by an extra 20 percent like this is really really good and break effect if you don't know what it does i for the longest time thought that it helped you bre breach an enemy's toughness like reduce their white bar but ah. Uh, uh, break effect makes you deal extra damage to an already broken enemy so like that's what it does and since CLA already hits like a goddamn truck the de dealing extra damage to broken enemies is good it's really good and then you have inert sal sotto increase the wearer's crit rate by eight percent when the wearer's current crit rate reaches 50 percent or higher the wearer's ultimate and follow-up uh, attack damage increase about 15 percent this is probably the one i'm gonna be running this this would be a li like a little bit depending on <coughs> sorry um how the rest of your relics are looking are you like severely lacking in any like attack percentage then maybe running space ceiling station will be the better one i really like <coughs> the inert salsot one Because adding on extra 15% uh, damage to your ultimate, obviously gonna be really, really goddamn good. But yeah, you can go on with, with Space Signal Station, Inert Salsotto, really good. Uh, same with Kingdom of Banditry, also really goddamn solid. Same with Celestial Differentiator. This one a little bit less. I would say go for Inert Salsotto if you can manage to like reach the requirements for this. Otherwise, Space Ceiling Station, really low requirements for Sela. I say go for it. And as for like the main stat here, you want Quantum Quantum Damage Boost. I haven't been lucky enough yet to get Quantum Damage uh, on anything that she can use, but I will work on that. And when it comes to the link rope, either you go break effect or you go attack. Let's see if I have, yeah, attack. I'd say go attack if you can find one, but if you get a break effect one that has like, has crit rate, has crit damage, like, it works, it works. But, but try to get a good attack percentage one. On the main stat one, you kind of want crit rate or crit damage. Although Sela gets a lot of crit damage from her uh, from her traces, so I feel like crit rate is usually like the more important stat to gun for. And as for shoes, it's a bit of a hot topic. Like what's best for Sela? If you have either on two, so you can uh, stack your own speed boost then definitely go attack percentage and even if you don't have either on two i'd say still go attack percentage but you can go speed if you want but you will yeah if you want to min max and really like really optimize 
I'd say go attack percentage and then the stats you are looking for it's like any other hyper carry dps you want crit rate you want crit damage you want attack and you want break effect simple as that and yeah really not, nothing special nothing, not, nothing fancy you wanna crit you wanna crit a lot and when you crit you wanna hit like a freaking truck Uh, oh, I think that's it for artifacts. Either brilliant stars or wild wheat. Go brilliant stars, but don't start farming it until level 40. Uh, these planar spheres and stuff. Inert, inert Salsotto or Space Sealing Station or, King, or Kingdom of Battery. It also works. So that's the differentiator, differentiator works, kinda. Me personally, I'm not loving this. So I would rather go Space Signal Station or Inert also too, with a quantum damage boost. And on the link rope, you want either break effect or attack, preferably attack. Alright, let's move on. So what does Sela actually do? Her ultimate. She targets one enemy Sail enters the buff state and leaves quantum damage equal to 382% of her attack to a single enemy It's a big nuke on a single target uh, This deals an insane amount of damage Her technique, after using her technique, Sail against stealth for 20 seconds uh, While stealth is active, Sail can only be detected by enemies And when entering battle by attacking enemies, Sail will Im immediately enter her buffed state so yeah, you go into stealth, when you initiate combat from stealth, you will already start the combat uh, buffed up. While Sailor is in the buff state, her quantum span is increased by 20%. This is insane, especially uh, paired up with the artifact, uh, the Brilliant Stars. Absolutely insane. Like, and then you pair her together with like Pela, like the enemies will just not have resistance. <laughs> that we will have literally no resistance. Skill. Increases sail speed by 25% for 2 turns and this quantum damage equal to 192% of sales attacks to single enemy. So, you remember Eidolon 2? This stacks, so sail gains 50% of her speed for 2 turns. Basic attack, just a simple slash with the scythe. So, here is what really makes sail special. It's resurgent. Enters the buffed state upon defeating an enemy with a basic attack skill or ultimate. And receives an extra turn. While in the buffed state, the damage of sales attack increases by 70% for one turn. The percentage increases by level. Enemies defeated in the, e in the extra turn provided by resurgence will not trigger another resurgence. So you can't keep having another turn simply by killing people with the skill. But we can still keep having our turn, like, always. I've done, done like certain combats where she has like 16 turns, uh, and then the combat is over, and nobody else has <laughs> like even got it close to act. Uh, and we'll go into detail on exactly how to do that. Another really, really interesting thing about Sela that you must keep in mind is when Resurgence procs and she gets another turn it still only counts as one turn so if you have if you have buffs that increases your damage for like for one turn say Bronya for example her skill is that she immediately gets a teammate to act and that teammate will have increased damage uh, for a little bit if I'm not mistaken or is that a light gun that makes it anyway certain Certain buffs only last for one turn. Sela doesn't use up more than one turn, even when she acts twice. So in like in reality, any buff you put on Sela is actually like worth double. It's like you get double the value out of it because Sela can use the same buff on like several attacks, which is really something to keep in mind. 
Uh, bonus ability, Rippling Waves, I haven't unlocked this one yet. I'm using a basic attack, Sailor's next action with advance forward at 20%. Really good, really good. And also I said, when current HP percentage is 50% or lower, it reduces the chance of being attacked by enemies. Also decent, Sailor is quite squishy, she's a glass cannon. And as you can see, she gets a lot of like crit damage boost from her... Uh, yeah, from these little... From these little nodes, like eight percent here, we have ten percent here, and then we have five point three percent here. See, so yeah, in a lot of cases, crit rate is more important than get than crit damage because yeah, she she gets a crit damage quite a lot from her trace. All right, but let's move on. All right, let's move on to light cones. Her Absolutely best in slot, Lycone, is in the night. I, no question about it. This is insane. Increases the wearer's crit rate by 80%. While the wearer is, wearer is in battle for every 10 speed that exceeds 100, the damage of the wearer's basic attack and skill is increased by 6%, and the crit damage of their ultimate is increased by 12%. This effect can stack up to 6 times. This is really good. This is borderline broken. So, if you have a, if you can get yourself up to 160 speed, you will have this. You will have six stacks of this, and that's quite insane. It will increase the crit damage of your ultimate by 80. Yeah, this one is broken. So I thought I'd showcase. Like some free to play ones. Because not everybody's going to be able to get this. And I also noted that I've used most of my free stars, uh, free star light cones, as fodder for a four star or a five star. So even though the, the effect on the free star ones are good, you also have to keep in mind that the base stats of them are quite a bit lower than like from a four star or a five star. But let, let's go through them. Adversarial at Superimpose 5. And I'm gonna read all of the freestar uh, light cones at Superimpose 5 because they're super easy to get to that. When the wearer defeats an enemy, it increases speed by 80% for two turns. Ah, I... It works. It works. Do you feel like you need more speed or your seller? This works. Although there are better ones. This one, for example Arrows. At the start of the battle, the wearer crit rates increase by 24% for free turns. So remember, the sailor can act several times uh, a turn without it like counting as extra turns. So she can like potentially get out like more than six attacks on these free turns. And not to mention like the ultimate. Then we have darting arrow. When the wearer defeats an enemy, increases attack by 48% for free turns. Uh, look, this one is good. This m might be the best uh, free star out there. It depends. So you're lacking a bit in crit, then arrows is better for you. Otherwise, I would go with darting arrow. And also, you can buy a five star light cone from uh, uh, what's it called? I think this one. This one is from Hertha's store. Yeah. So you, you get Hertha Bond when you defeat levels in the simulated universe. Uh, simply because the increase in main stats, like if you're sitting without a good uh, 4 or 5 star, like I would get this just for the increases in main stat. And like what it does isn't bad. Increases the wearer's attack, uh, sorry, increases the wearer's crit rate by 60%. And increases their crit rate against enemies with less, with HP less the, than or equal to 50%. By an extra 16%. When the wearer defeats an enemy, their attack increases by 40% for two turns. I'm oh, sorry, I read that at Superimpose 5. It's gonna take you a little while to get it to Superimpose 5. So basically, number one on the first one, 8% crit damage, extra 8%, and your attack increases by 20% for two turns. I would probably say, are, are you lacking a, another good light cone? Go for this. Go for this. 
Only silence remains, increases the wearer's attack by 60%. If there are two or fewer enemies on the field, increases the wearer's crit rate by 12%. It's decent. It's decent. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can slap, slap this on. This, this is one of the more interesting ones, I think. Subscribe for more. Increases the damage of the wearer's basic deck and skill by 24%. This effect increases by an extra 24% when the wearer's current energy reaches its max level. So if you have your ult ready, your skill will do like a 50% increased damage. This one is good. This is good. And yeah, in the night, her signature one. Return to darkness. I think this is the one you get from the battle pass. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't really bother about this one. Sleep like the dead, Yang King's one. Increase the wearer's crit damage by 30% when a wearer's basic dagger skill does not result in a crit hit. Increases the crit rate by 36% for one turn. This effect can be only be triggered one ter time every three turns. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. If you if you have it, use it. It's probably one of the like the second best Lightcon to use for her. And then we have Swordplay. For each time the wearer hits the same target. Uh, actually, we can check this one in game. Because I have it quite superimposed, I believe. So we go switch, and we go this one. For each time the wearer hits the same target, damage result increases by 12%. Stacking up to 5 times. This effect will be the spell when the wearer changes target. From the get-go, this is not the best for Sela. Because with her, you, you kind of want to like mop up the weaker enemies. Uh, to get your resurgence, to get your buffs, to get more turns, etc, etc. Although, like, having one of these uh, quite enhanced and quite ascended is not a bad idea when you're heading into the um, simulated universe and stuff, where you're going to be like fighting tanky bosses. Because at, at the end of the day, you will have like a 60% increased damage to that boss uh, after you attacked it a couple of times. But yeah, it works. Not not the super best. Since you want to be changing around targets. But like having one to put on at on special locations is not bad. Not bad. So yeah, in the night, sell the signature weapon will be the best one. Second best one, sleep like the dead. Uh, other than that, you you have a, f a few other four stars that can work for you. Uh, the, the simulated universe one you can buy with Hertha's points is good. It's good. I, I'm I'm I'll say if you don't if you can't of if you don't have any of these two, go for the simulated universe one. Otherwise, subscribe for more is really good. Like, really good. Alright, let's move on. Alright, let's touch upon teams a little bit. Sela is what you would call a hyper carry, and she's a super selfish hyper carry. Like, literally, this is a turn based game, but when you have Sela in your party, like, properly invested, properly, like, supported. There are so many combats where neither your allies or the enemies will even have a single turn. <coughs> so, since she's a hyper carry, there's also a big chance that she will like get power creeped in the future. Uh, but we, we, we will see. As you've seen, I've invested a lot into my sailor, and I can't really see how Mehoyu would ever like ma <laughs> manage to make her obsolete. So, uh, the team I'm running, for example, I have Byler as a healer because he's absolutely bonkers. I have Pela because she can take away two thirds of an enemy's defense, even more with higher level, <coughs> which is absolutely insane. And I have Asta. Uh, preferably, I would like to have Bronya uh, instead of Asta, and maybe. Veld instead of Pela. Maybe. Like, but Pela is so freaking good. See my Pela guide for more. 
uh, that I would probably not switch her out for anything. But yeah, Bronya instead of Asta would be like the optimal, optimal thing. But we can't always be that lucky. Uh, that is not how you do it. So I have Asta to give attack boost to the entire team. I have Baylor to heal the entire team and I have Pela to like shred the enemy's defense. And after that it's just like Sailor's turn to shine. The enemies have no defense, Sail has a billion attack. And yeah, it's just it's just mayhem. And actually for my undying starlight, I bought Time went for no one. It is Bylus. Lightcon, increase the wearer's max HP by 21% and outgoing healing by 40%. When wearer heals, wearer heals allies, record them out of outgoing healing and when an ally launches an attack, a random attack the enemy takes additional damage equal to 42% of the recorded outgoing healing value. This additional damage is of the same type as the wearer's. It's not affected by other buffs and can only occur one time per turn. So, if uh, Bailu heals Let's say 5,000 across the board, which is like not. Uh, it's it, like that happens a lot. Then the next ally having a turn will deal 42% of those 5,000 as an extra damage. And like if Sela is next, that will go on Sela and that can also like help her get the killing blows. Because that's what you want to get, Ocelli. You want to get the killing blows. You want to get all of those killing blows. So either you run her like with a full support team. Um, and like the light cone I have on Pela is resolution chance of pulse of sweat. Which has a 60% base chance to ensnare enemies. And ensnare enemies defense decreases by 12%. This stacked on top of all of other uh, Pela's other abilities. The shred defense is just insane. And on Asta, I'm running Dance, Dance, Dance. This is a light cone that not enough people are talking about. It is so good. When a wearer uses their ultimate, all allies' actions are advanced forward by 16%. So when you play with Sela, like speed and having a billion turns is the name of the game. And this helps you with that. And Asta's ult already you know, like increases everybody's speed by... 41% and I can level it up even more or not sorry not percent but 41 and it's only at level 5 so I can keep going with this one uh, other other teams you can run is um, like, like you input another damage dealer like I found that Himiko works quite well uh, she will do follow up attacks when uh, enemies drop uh, when enemies break rather uh, and their ult is a big, 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 just nuclear bomb on the entire enemy team. Like, sweeping up after that nuclear bomb is really, really easy with Sela. So, yeah, if you feel like you want more damage in your team, like, that is not bad. I would recommend AoE damage, just, just so you, like, get everybody down, kind of low, and then you can sweep, sweep everything up with Sela. Um... Uh, Another team that like works would work quite well. Uh, like, yeah, like I said, you you do kind of a follow up team like Herta and Himeko, like big AE damage your entire team, and then you sweep it up with Sail, and then you have a healer, and I have Baylor, and she is by far the best healer in the game. If you don't have Baylor, you obviously swap her out for Natasha. Natasha is also really really good. Like she's she's insanely good, and she can remove debuffs. Uh, on your team, like she has a cleanse. So yeah, basically build your team around Sela, build with characters that like benefit her in some way, either by buffing her or like increasing or decreasing the enemy's defenses or like stuff like that. Everything to enable, enable her to get the killing blows when she finally does attacks on the enemies, if that makes sense. All right, let me showcase how like how you're supposed to think in combats. All right, <clears throat> I popped into the simulated universe simply because any enemy in 
like the overworld outside of here, it dies too quickly. This little ball is weak to quantum. So let's initiate using our technique. We will start the combat buff. Damage that increased by 70% and quantum rest pain plus 20%. This is insane. So, these ones are not hard hitting enemies. Let's use the skin. Yes. Bing bada boom, we get another turn. Resurgence. Currently, currently in the turn, extra turn provided by Resurgence. We have the first speed boost going, which means that our light cone will also now be like giving us even more stuff. Let's start with using an alt. Since we have Eidolon uh, 4 on her, see, we, we, we used our alt to kill someone, and we <laughs> regained like a third of our alt right away from it. Which is insane because we get back another 50 energy whenever we kill somebody. Alright, on to the next. Alright, up ahead, we have an enemy weak to frost. So we're gonna use Pela. We're gonna initiate the third technique. Maybe this would be a good showcase to like ask why I love running Pela. We're gonna use her ultimate right away. So we initiated with her technique. Let's take a look at the enemies. Ensnarement, exposed, defense reduction. We right now have reduced his defense by minus 69. That is quite insane. That is quite insane. And with this one, like they don't even have a third of their defense going for them. Just normal skill, bada bing, bada boom. This one is a little bit tanky, but I think one skill will be enough to get him. Yeah. Like, look at that. One skill, 15,000 damage. And, like, this is the first room of the simulated universe. So we are not, like, running a billion stacked uh, hunt. Uh, upgrades and that's why we're doing this much damage. This is this is kind of your space kit, but uh, on to the next one. All right, so up ahead we're gonna have an elite combat, which is good. This is gonna give me some time to show you. Damn it, we only had one skill point. I should have looked better. So I'm a disgusting whale. So I'm sitting on a C6 Sela, or E6 Sela, I'm sorry. Do you, do you remember what the E6 does? Let me remind you. Let's start off with an ultimate. 22,000 damage. He now has Butterfly Flurry. On hit, receives an extra quantum damage from Sela. So, this deals 15% of what her alt did to him. So it's gonna be 15% of 22,000. This gonna deal roughly 3,300 damage whenever somebody else attacks him. Look at the quantum damage coming out now when Asta does attack. Like, Asta is, Asta is not a hard hitter. Her Asta's attack on her own did 500. The butterfly flurry effect, 3000. But yeah, now enemy had his turn. Now he no longer has uh, the butterfly effect on him. Ooh, we couldn't get that hit off. Ah, yeah. All right, we're using Asta's ability to get more damage. We're using our ultimate to speed up our entire team. And since we're running dance, 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 uh, like the actions gets forwarded as well.
ットを確認おや This die. Well, all right. Now let's end this. So we're gonna reduce everybody's defense to nothing. Yeah. There we go. So basically, her E6 like really gives her like boss killing potential. Like I said, we're, we're running a team f like just tailored to help uh, to help and enable Sela and like Sela in her turn what she gives back to the rest of the team is like them being able to actually deal some like serious damage. Like you saw, Asta's shot was gonna deal 500 with uh, Sela's mark on that boss. Bada bing bada boom, like we she dealt six times the amount of damage she was gonna deal without it. Like it is insane, it's borderline insane. Alright, peeps, that's about wrapped up my sailor guide. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative and that it you learned something new or that it was in some way or form useful to you. I don't want to waste anybody's time uh, and I hope you didn't feel like I did. This is my second guide uh, ever and I'm like I'm really loving it. My first guide was uh, Regan and Pela. People seem to enjoy that so I made one of Sela. Uh, my plan is to make one of like every character. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully. If, if, if people still keep enjoying them and all of that and yeah I'm, I'm really enjoying this content creation. Uh, part of things so yeah i hope you people are also enjoying it and if you made it this far please consider uh, subscribing or leaving a like i would deeply appreciate it if you have any feedback or questions please leave it in the comments below uh, i stream every single day either on youtube or twitch link would be in the description come say hello chances are that i'm streaming honkai or something else right darn now so hey pop in say hello and if not, that's also okay. I just want you to know, anybody watching, I appreciate the hell out of you. Thank you for watching. And one final little bit. One final little tidbit for the people in the end. I have an E6 sailor, but I've somehow n not managed to pull a single thing in. But thing in is really 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 good she's amazing together with sailor user if you have her but don't tell the other people only like a few percent watch until the very end so yeah it's our little secret but she's amazing if you're lucky enough to have her use the crap out of her all right until next time people i appreciate you Hawk out <laughs>